channel. I'm a teacher from New York, right outside the city. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a graphic syllabus. You can use it in place of or in addition to a traditional paper syllabus. You can put it on the smart board, you can post it on Google Classroom or whatever learning management system you use, or you can put it on your class website. So if you enjoy this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get started. Here's my graphic syllabus. You can share it like this and put it into preview mode and post it in Google Classroom or whatever learning management system you use. Personally, I'm gonna post it on my class website, which is currently under construction. Uh, but this way, everybody can have all the information at their fingertips, including parents. So let's get started making our graphic syllabus. I'm in a new Google Slides presentation, and let's just get started by cleaning up our workspace, closing out the themes, and I'm gonna click down and drag until both boxes are highlighted. Press delete to get rid of that, and give my presentation a title. So this is easy enough to do. Let's select a background color. And I like blue, blue and white are our school colors, so I always go with that. And now we just gotta start putting in some text boxes. So I'm gonna put in my first text box, and I'm gonna select a fill color, and you can either do white or a light gray, whatever you like best. And I'm gonna do a black border, but I want it to be a nice thick border. Let's see, four looks pretty good. Let's see what eight looks like. Yeah, either four or eight work well. So now I'm gonna put in my text. I'm gonna select a font I like Oswald. It's a nice clean font and doesn't take up a lot of space. And then I'm just gonna start putting in my text. Okay, so now that I've got all my text in, I'm gonna bold the text of this first box and maybe I'll make it a little bigger. Okay, that looks good, but I'm just gonna make the box a little bigger to accommodate that. Okay, great. And now I need to make as many text boxes as I have information to put out there. So I'm gonna press Command D or Control D to duplicate this box. And then I'm just gonna drag it down. And the reason I wanna duplicate it rather than creating a new one is so that I get the same font and the same formatting, all the background and all that's all done. So now I'm gonna go back to a 14 and unbold it. Oh, I don't think it went to a 14. There we go. And now I'm just gonna fill in the rest of my boxes. But the problem is I can already tell I'm not going to be able to fit the information that I want to on this slide. So we need to change the page size. So I'm gonna to go to the file menu and page setup. Now I'm gonna to go to custom and the custom size is 10 by 5.63 inches. That's the standard size for the custom selection. I'm gonna double that. Okay, it doesn't look like anything changed, but we can see here, actually, when we doubled the page size, slides automatically doubled the font size. So if we just go back to the fonts that we had, I'm gonna triple click to highlight everything, and select 18. Wow, so it's really actually much bigger. Now I'm gonna try something in the middle. Let's try 24 for this first one. And size it up, I just dragged the bottom up. And now um, I'm gonna try 18 for this one. But again, you can just kind of play with it and see what you like. Now I'm gonna delete this text. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the text and duplicate some text boxes, and then we'll pick up when I've got my text boxes all filled in. Okay, I've got my next text box filled in, so I'm just gonna duplicate this. Command D or Control D, drag it over, and 
I know I want this one bigger, so I'm just going to drag it down and delete the text. Now, in this one, I did use some emojis. So here is the extension that I use, Joy Pixels. I have a tutorial on extensions. This one's in there. So if you want to get this extension and you're wondering how to get it, then you can just check out that tutorial. I'll put the link in the description below. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know I love this star. So you can search for it if you haven't used it recently and just select whichever one you want. And it's already copied. So once I press it, it shows up in this copied window. And then when I need it, I've got it copied already. Okay, I'm gonna paste in my star. And I'm gonna go ahead and bold this. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and keep duplicating and filling in my text boxes. Okay, so I've duplicated all my text boxes and put in the text that I want. But you can see I need to do some resizing and rearranging. So I'm gonna move this down a little. And I might need to move that over. So I don't wanna do too much till I find out because this definitely needs to be resized. And I'm just dragging by the sides, as you can see. I wait till I get that little arrow, and then I drag up or to the side, and just rearrange everything, or resize everything, and then we'll do some rearranging. Oops, I didn't really wanna move that. It doesn't really matter, but if you ever do something like that and you wanna undo it, Command Z or Control Z undoes the last thing that you just did. Okay, so now we need to figure out how we want these laid out. First of all, I want this one a little shorter. So I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit because I do want some word art at the bottom. So for now, I'm gonna pull this up. I'm gonna get those crosshairs and pull it up just a bit so I can see, so I have some space for my word art. So I'm gonna go to Insert. Word art. Okay, so I just typed it in and hit enter. And just to show you that again, with word art, if you hit enter, it automatically creates it the so the width of the slide. If you have more than one line of word art, you need to hit shift and enter in order to get to the next line. So let me just bring this down. I'm gonna get those crosshairs. There we go. I'm gonna put this at the bottom. And with word art, you can do all the same formatting options you want. You can change the font. I'm gonna change it. Oh, see, now here's the thing. If you change the font after the fact, it actually changes the size. So I'm just gonna go with this font because it looks really good like that and it's the right width. Um, you can change the border color, you can change the background color or the fill color, and the border thickness. So I'm going to make a little thicker border. And I teach computer science, so that's why it says welcome to CS class. And now let's just rearrange these boxes a little now that I have that. Let's see. I want these spaced out. You can um, go to Format Options if you right click and go to Format Options. You can see, so I've got uh, this middle box highlighted. So this will give me the size and the position if you want to really do it mathematically. I just kind of eyeball it, which probably takes longer because then, you know, I'm always rearranging things. I'm going to put this over here, and I'm actually going to make this a little wider, even though it doesn't need it, just so that they're all the same size, because this will have more information in it with the class codes, and I want them to be all the same width. And that's one thing I do check on the formatting, just to make sure that they're all the same width. But you can tell by, oops, Command Z, I don't know how I flipped that upside down, but I did. Okay, get this in the crosshairs. Okay, so that's enough rearranging for right now. You see those red guidelines? That's how I tell that things are lined up. 
I do want this over to the right a little more because I'm just looking at the margin on the other side. Okay, so now I'm gonna start with my decorations. So for one thing, I'm gonna put in my Bitmoji. So I'm gonna make some space for her. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Bitmoji extension that I have. And again, that's in the extensions um, video that I have. And this is the one that I used. You can just search the word hi and you'll get this one. I just drag and drop her in. You can also copy and paste control V, control C from the Bitmoji extension to control V into slides. Okay. And I'm going to size her down a little bit. The problem is she's got that word high there that I don't want. So what I'm going to do, first I'm going to move this up and give her a little more space. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to insert shape and this is kind of vaguely circular, this word. So I'm going to go with a circle. Although it actually might have been easier to go with a rectangle because of the lines above, but that looks pretty good. That, yeah, that covers the word. So I'm going to highlight this again and just pick the same fill, fill color I'm already using and transparent border. And it's gone. Now, the only other important thing to do here is to highlight. I'm going to drag my cursor over both the Bitmoji and where the shape is. I can see they're both highlighted. So I'm going to right click. That's two fingers on my trackpad and press group. So now if I move her around, that shape goes with her. Okay, and I can see she's just a little above that box. I don't want that line in between them. There we go. That's great. And then the rest of the images I just got from clip art. So I'm going to go to insert, image, search the web, and I'm going to search for transparent cartoon pencil. Okay, that did not need to be in all caps. And this is the one that I used. And I'm just going to right click this, rotate, flip horizontally, and I'm going to close this out. And I added some books, transparent cartoon books. I added a laptop, transparent laptop, all those things. Um, but one, and the one reason that I like to use Google Slides is because the search is already filtered and everything is easy to use. One thing that I do want to do though is I want to add my school logo. So I'm going to go to a new Google search and go to images. And this is the one that I want to use. So I'm going to right click and press, oops, not copy link address, right click and press copy image and go back to my slides and insert this image. I copied it so I don't even have to insert. I can just paste it. Okay. So this is great. This is perfect. But now I want my background to be this shade of blue. So I'm going to use another extension. Again, this is in my extensions video. It's called Colorzilla. And I'm going to do pick color from page. And I just put my little crosshairs over the blue. And you can see in that bar at the top that the blue is showing up. So that's the one I want. The color is copied to the, to the uh, clipboard. So now I'm just going to go back to background, color. And now I'm going to select custom and just command V or control V. And that copies the hex code for that color right in there and I get that exact shade. So now that's all, um, my background's the same color as my Ram Nation logo. And now I just have to fix this shape. So let me go to the fill bucket. I just clicked on the shape to highlight it, go to the fill color, and I don't even have to copy the hex code again because it's right here in my custom colors. There we go. Okay, so I add this in here, just drag and drop it. Put it right on top there. Let me close this out. And I added a text box. So I'm going to add this text box right here. And I changed the font. So if the font that you see 
if the font that you want isn't here, you guys, if you've watched my videos, you know I love extensive fonts, but I'm going to show you another way for people that don't have access to that. You just click on more fonts and audio wide is the one that I used for this. So I'm going to highlight this text and select audio wide. Okay, so now it's an audio wide and oops, I don't want the background color to be white. I want the font color to be white. And then I just increase the size until it fills the space. There we go. And it's easy as that. If you want to make sure that these are all the same size, I'm going to right highlight one, right click, go to format options, size. So this one's 5.62 by 1 1.5. I'm just going to make it 5.6 by 1.5 to make it easier. Okay. And you can see these are slightly off, which means I'll never be able to line them up. And then I just go ahead and use the guidelines. And again, you can use this format options to check position and see if they're all. Oh. So in the X position, X is left to right. This is 13.78, 13.78, 13.78. So these are all lined up. And here, this one is 0 0.44, 0 0.44. And then you can go ahead and check the width and height and these are slightly different oh they're different heights so um which is right they're supposed to be different heights it's the width that matters so this one's 5.91 and so is this so that's it for the graphic organizer again all the other images i just got from searches within google slides every image search that you do from within google slides has already been filtered for reuse so there's no issues there so like I said, you can share this in a lot of different ways, and it's just a fun way to make the information in a syllabus into easily digestible bits. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. If you found it helpful, please share it with your teacher friends. If you're looking for me on social media, on Instagram and Twitter, I'm at Easy Ed Tech. Hope to see you there. So here's the finished product. If you'd like to learn how to put it into preview mode without the navigation bar at the bottom like I did here. I go over that in my tutorial on how to make a board game style lesson. I'll put the link to that in the description below this video so that you can check that out if you're interested. But this is a great way to share your graphic syllabus. Thanks so much for watching.